for me, this issue could be quite easily solved if we focus on two main areas. The first one is money, which is always a difficult conversation to have lots of people about where we find the money from. Well, we find money for other things. We find money to make bullets and to make other bits of you know, detrimental things that kill people. We find the money for that. So if we can find the money for that, surely we can find the money to you know, really put provisions in place for our young people to allow them to have a better outcome. The next alarming fact I found out while I was doing this talk was that one fifth of all knife crimes committed between, for, for, between the ages of 10 to 17. And that's why, again, early intervention, early intervention <coughs> is so important. If we can get out into our local communities, speak to our young people, let them know the consequences of knife crime. That's the one major thing I always try to express to young people, is the consequences of not just today, not tomorrow, you know, not in a few weeks' time, but these things are not for years. Next year will be 30 years since we've lost Stephen, and there's not a day that goes on to go past, recently even more so now, that I have my own child, that I think to myself, Theo's missing out on an uncle. He's missing out on cousins that he could have had. And this is all through someone's perception of the way to deal with things is through violence. That's not right. And I did, and I'll share with this what happened to me the other day as well. So I, I, I went and did a book so I've written a book about the, the consequences of you know life, etc. And I did a book tour with Stroud and uh, a young person afterwards, he was uh, going to prove. And he said that he was sent to prove because he'd been involved in some, some wrong things in his early part of his childhood, age 13. He was now 16. And he'd seen the error of his ways. And after coming to him, he spoke to me. He wanted to have a chat with me about something that happened in his life. Now, he was put in a situation where two of his friends were involved in a life crime incident. One of them lost their life, and one of them went to prison. And he felt that it was his fault the reason why this happened. He felt that he could have done or said something different to stop the person, his friend, in killing his other friend. And I thought back about to these scenarios, this situation here, where we are now. If those environments were there for our young people to inform them about conflict resolution, or if you do find yourself in this scenario, what to do next? Would he have been in a better position? I do believe that would have been a better scenario for him to be in, rather than him now, looking back on it going, I could have said something different, I could have said something different, I could have done something different. I should have been there. And all these other scenarios that he's now put himself through. And I had to say to him, really and truly, we are only in control of ourselves. That's all that we can control. We can't control anyone else. We can inform. We can try to speak to each other, try to educate. But really, truly, it comes down to each and every one of us making our own decisions, our own actions, and then hold, holding ourselves responsible for those. So I'm really hopeful that you know, he can then take that point and try to move on somewhere in his life about that. Uh, I also want to kind of share with you today a few facts as well. So, uh, part of this uh, talks I've been doing as well is about information, knowledge. I'm, I'm a teacher at heart, in essence, and I'd love to share with you this, this wonderful story as well about the reason why it's important for education and knowledge. Um, another question to the crowd. Number one flavour in Coca-Cola the drink? There we go. Cherry, no. Raspberry, no. Vanilla. Vanilla is the number one flavouring in, in, in Coca Cola. Now, does anyone know where vanilla pods and plants actually grow? What country would you say? Madagascar. Madagascar, that's what I'm saying, Madagascar. Yes, Madagascar is the perfect climate for growing vanilla vanilla pods. 